Uh, let's now get to an uh, interesting uh, guest we have today on the show, Bundeep Singh Ranga, who is the chairman of Indus View, an India-focused corporate advisory company. Uh, Mr. Ranga, many, many thanks for being on Times Now today uh, from our studio in London. First question to you, sir, is um, we've got a pretty disappointing, uh, pretty disappointing action on in European markets today and it looks like the Dow Jones um, industrial average is forecast to be lower all that because of events happening in Washington with the US polls Democrats have swept the lower house they look poised to sweep or to make gains in the upper house of the Congress there are issues regarding that Washington might just become a less friendly place to do business in especially for foreign investors what should Indian investors or investors in India be worried about Thanks, Sid. I think the real issue is one of perception. The Democrats are perceived to be more, uh, I guess, less business friendly, a little less towards a Republican mandate of lean government and more business. But the reality is under the Republican government, we saw more of the offshoring and potential loss of jobs be an election issue. We've seen big government get bloated under the Bush administration. So, you know, I think the Democrats may actually be more victim of perception. I think it's really a, a question of waiting and seeing over the next 30, 90 days how it actually pans out. Right. Uh, Mr. Ranga, you know, U.S. markets uh, over the past few days have been scaling new highs and so have Asian markets. They've been tracking the same rally. Of course, today there, there has been some amount of caution which has crept in into the markets. But uh, how sustainable uh, do you think is the current uh, global rally? I think there's different drivers for different stock markets. Clearly, there's positive sentiment worldwide, which has been driven equities. You know, in Europe, you're seeing highs, the U.S. and India. But I think... In India in particular, the perception at least here in London is it's, it's based on fundamentals. There's earnings growth that is just compounded and that's confounded analysts. These are companies that are, you know, the top 30 companies growing at 30%, IT companies growing way beyond analyst expectations. So I think the drivers for the stock market valuations, particularly in India, are driven by fundamentals. I think that is still somewhat insulated by what we're seeing in the last few days in the U.S. Of course, the stock market is a reflection of both reality and fundamentals and, of course, perception. I think that right now it's, again, a victim of perception. Right. If one were to ask you among emerging markets, uh, which to you now looks the most attractive? Where do you see India's valuation in comparison to other emerging markets? Well, I think in India, um, valuations are clearly high, but every time someone says high, they keep going higher. And the good news, of course, is that, you know, the earnings are batching them up and you're seeing strong, positive... Uh, real earnings here that are very well accounted. I think the second thing is that Indian companies are getting very aggressive for expansion. So what's happening as a result of this high valuation is you're getting a strong acquisition currency. And you know, talking about the, the whole election issue last time in the U.S., well, the reality in the U.K. right now is that Indian companies spend more in the U.K. than British companies spend in India, and they create more jobs. So the overseas expansion is a result of strong valuation, strong fundamentals, strong earnings. So you really have to question whether you can say the Indian companies are highly valued if you're only looking at it from a domestic economy perspective. Look at it globally, yeah, the valuations of Infosys, TCS, Wipro, yeah, they're well in excess of what... U.S. or Western comparables are in the form of EDS or Capgemini, but I think that's because the Indian companies are just growing globally. Mr. Ranga, sitting here in London, we see an enormous interest in many, many blue chip companies in India in expanding into Europe. Obviously, what comes to mind is Tata and is taking over, of course. I wondered, um, what do you think about the mid-tier companies in India? Is, is that interest sustained across the board in India and what should we be looking out for? So here's what's really interesting. You see the large companies making acquisitions, particularly like this 24 billion spent in, in the year to date till October. That's a phenomenal number. What's more interesting is that IT companies are leading a lot of that, keeping aside the Tata Cores deal, which is an exception to the rule, and that's responsible for about 8 billion of that 24 billion figure. But the IT companies are gradually increasing their appetite for the size of deals. From last year, 16 million to an average deal size of about 30 million this Ooh. year. That's seen while the number of deals are about the same, the total number of deals done by the IT industry is about one and a half billion. Now that makes it very, very um, interesting to look at in terms of Indian companies' global expansion. I don't really um, think this is going to decline. I think this is just the beginning of a long series of acquisitions that, that IT companies in particular will make. Now, leaving aside that, yeah, you asked a question about leading companies versus mid-tier companies. If you look at a second-tier company that's following TCS Wipro, they're saying, well, the big guys are growing 30% organically, period. How are we going to keep up? Well, the only way out for them to match the top-tier companies is inorganic growth, i.e. overseas attractions.
Have you run, run out of time or one more question for Mr. Ranga? I think we're totally out of town, uh, time now, Sid. But uh, thank you so much and thanks, we're Mr. Totally Ranga, so much uh, for joining us on the show this afternoon with all those insights in the markets and uh, global economy. Pleasure.